The Veyron's reign as the world fastest production car is at an end, and the usurper comes from within. Yes, the £1.9 million Chiron retains the Veyron's fundamental proportions and powertrain, but it's new in every other conceivable way, and built to bend physics to breaking point. The Chiron is not a hybrid. Unlike its closest competitors, the McLaren P1, LaFerrari and Porsche 918, it relies solely on fossil fuels. Its engine is a development of the Veyron's 8.0-liter quad-turbo W16, its gearbox a strengthened version of the Veyron's 7-speed twin-clutch, and like the Veyron it deploys its immense power through all four wheels. Whereas the Veyron Supersport produced a piffling 1,183 bhp and 1,106 pounds-foot of torque, the Chiron develops 1,479 bhp and 1,180 pounds-foot o, and at a constant top speed the Veyron could drain its 100-liter fuel tank in 12 minutes. The Chiron can do it in 9. It will accelerate from 0 to 62 miles per hour in less than 2.5 seconds, 0 to 124 miles per hour in less than 6.5 and 0 to 186 miles per hour in under 13.6. Take a moment to let that last one sink in. That's 2.9 seconds faster than a P1 and a second quicker than the Veyron Super Sport, bearing in mind that at 186 miles per hour a second equals a lot of fresh air, 83 meters of it to be precise. Then there's the top speed, which Bugatti has limited to 261 miles per hour on the standard Chiron, a token 3 miles per hour more than the Veyron Super Sport, but raised to 273 miles per hour on the 2.6 million pounds Chiron Super Sport. Key to the engine's swollen power reserves are four larger turbos that work in tandem to deliver maximum torque from 2,000 to 6,000 revolutions per minute, that's across 70% of the engine's full operating range. The two-stage system only calls on two turbos up to 3,800 revolutions per minute, to improve throttle response, and all four beyond that. A new titanium exhaust system helps out by reducing back pressure compared to the Veyron and houses two enormous catalytic converters, each six times the size of one you'll find in a Mondeo. There are six exit pipes in total, four sticking out the back and two pointing downwards to create a blown diffuser, a downforce boosting technology proven by, then subsequently banned in F1. Everything about the Chiron's powertrain is supersized. An improved charge air cooling system means 60,000 liters of air per minute are pumped through the engine, while the coolant pump can circulate 800 liters in the same time. In total there are 10 radiators crammed under the Chiron's skin. With great power comes great need for big brakes, so the front and rear discs are now 20 mm larger, 2 mm thicker and made from carbon silicon carbide, a material that's both lighter and more resistant to fade. Clamping them are eight piston calipers in the front and six piston at the rear, each piston a subtly different diameter to keep brake wear even. The tires, now 14% wider at the front and 12% wider at the rear, are wrapped around larger rims, 20-inch front and 21-inch rear, and built to withstand otherworldly forces. They need to be, as each gram of rubber is exposed to a centrifugal force of 3,800 g. A bigger contact patch on the road means better braking, acceleration and wet weather grip, while the updated four-wheel drive system uses electronic diffs on the front and rear axles, allowing fine control of the handling characteristics. Good stuff, great steering, incredible engineering, astonishing, and brutal, pace. Bad stuff, it costs £1.9 million. And, um, you'll need a long, long road to VMAX it. Which model would we go for? Bugatti will only ever build 500 Chirons, but within that will be a mix of Chiron, Chiron Sport, Chiron Pure Sport, and Super Sport. The coach-built specials, Devo, Cento DC, Voiture Noir, are on top of the 500. In fact, the standard Chiron and Chiron Sport have come to the end of their homologation run, so if you have a spare few million sloshing around, your choice is only between pure sport and super sport. 
Michelin has ditched the Pax system rubber for a Cup 2 design developed especially for this car. On a twisty road it's night and day superior to anything we experienced in Aveyron. There's big front grip from the 285mm section on turn-in, and then the 4WD system juggles things around so you can experience the full slingshot. And believe us, the first time you give it full afterburner from a second gear turn in a Chiron, is a moment to remember. In the Chiron, the full madness is available most of the time. Even on the Jebel Hafeet Road's dusty cambers, I could just bury it in second and the thing flew. No traction control warnings, no hesitation, just acceleration and instant gear shifts of a type we have never before experienced, not even in some zapped out tuna GTR. Tires are everything in the world of 200 miles per hour plus motoring. The rubber needs to be fresh, if the treads are too worn, you can't head beyond 210 miles per hour. If the pressures are too low, the same applies. The stats generated at speed in this car are more NASA than automotive. Aerodynamically, this car is way more advanced than the Veyron. It channels air aggressively down its flanks, keeping it attached to form a stabilizing pressure either side of that carbon skin. The rear wing switches for the best blend of slipperiness, downforce and air braking. The Chiron even has a separate pair of downward-facing exhausts to create a blown diffuser. But it cannot cheat physics, and that means the Chiron has a curious battle to overcome as it hurtles towards 231 miles per hour, the acceleration is so brutal that the airflow over the tires cools them to the extent that they lose pressure. And too little pressure could lead to very bad things. This is why you always run with the car's tire pressure monitoring system on the dashboard, it runs to two decimal places and you watch it like a hawk. Slacken the dampers and the ride is pleasantly supple, the hi-fi is strong and the cabin is so, so special. The Veyron was noisy at speed, but some extra sound deadening materials and, most importantly, double glazed glass make the Chiron much quieter at a cruise. The glazing is so effective that when you drop the window the turbocharger's whooshing and chattering is quite alarming. And quite gratifying, windows down, this thing sounds very naughty. Although the wheelbase is a scant 1mm longer than the Veyron, the Chiron is actually 14mm wider and 6mm taller, tiny increments for you or I, but a world of difference to a designer. The main benefit is an extra 12mm of headroom meaning you can drive it with a helmet on and not get a stiff neck. For the Super Sport, the bodywork is extended by 250mm to help keep the laminar flow attached for longer and reduce aerodynamic stall by 40%. Gone is the horizontal stack of four exhausts, replaced with two wide set double stacks leaving space for a much larger central diffuser. That allows the car to stay stuck to the road even with the wing fully retracted in top speed mode. Remember, any downforce created under the car is done so without a drag penalty, unlike sticking something into the airflow on the top surface of the car, which plays perfectly into this car's high speed aspirations. The rest of the interior is an exercise in minimizing driver distraction. An analog speedo is surrounded by digital TFD screens offering various entertainment and driving information. As the speed increases, the amount of info on the screens thins out, leaving the driver to concentrate on keeping the car on the road. A narrow center console, designed to echo the exterior Bugatti line, houses the gear lever and four circular aircon dials, each beautifully machined, a jewel in its own right. The real jewels, though, are in the speakers, a one-carat diamond membrane on each of the four tweeters, insert joke about crystal clear sound quality here, while the new 3D bonnet emblem or macaron, is made from enamel and solid silver. A cooled glove box is perfect for keeping the bullye on ice, suit bags and jackets can be hung behind the seats and a weekend bag can be stuffed under the front bonnet. Dear friends thank you all for subscribing thank you for supporting me love you.